Hi everyone, welcome back to the AI language. So today we we'll look at the transport mechanism in model context protocol, which is called streamable HTTP. So it's a new mechanism compared to the two earlier ones that we had, which were STD/IO, which is still there, and then uh, server sent events, which is now uh, possibly going to be deprecated. So I'll go over the client to server interactions possible over the life cycle of one session. So you can head over to modelcontextprotocol.io slash introduction and they give a pretty good introduction about MCP. I'll just run through a very few basic concepts over here and as you might already know that it is a communication standard released by Anthropic and it's designed to facilitate structured interactions between clients which we call as MCP clients and MCP servers uh, which you can see over here. So these are a bunch of servers over here which are connecting to a host with the MCP client and uh, this client is for example application on your computer or mobile device that requests data or actions and can access other resources as well. So the clients typically host or access an LLM like uh, Claude or you know GPT or Gemini or whatever and this can be an LLM based agent and that can then use MCP. So the agent can use model context protocol and have access to all these servers and tools on the servers. So the agent can decide that it wants to you know use a tool exposed by one of these servers and then use that to access let's say a data source A or a data source B through a different server or access resources over the internet or remote services like remote service C mentioned over here through a web API through this MCP server. But the communication that happens between uh, the host with the MCP client and the MCP server is through the model context protocol. The server basically processes the client requests and sends back responses or it can send back streams of messages through server sent events which we we'll look at and uh, event even notifications. So it's a bi-directional client server communication architecture as you can see over here. Now since there is this communication happening, we need to define a standard transport mechanism for this client server communication and Anthropic does that and uh, they give us two of them. So one of these transport mechanisms is streamable HTTP and the other one is STD-IO. Streamable HTTP enables communication over the internet. So this, this server does not need to live locally. It can be hosted on some cloud platform and streamable HTTP will help your client that might be running locally on your computer or you might be accessing it through a website which is hosted on some other server. So it can communicate to this external MCP server which is a remote server through streamable HTTP transport mode. So this enables the communication over the internet and the servers can handle multiple clients simultaneously through continuous message streams. So that's the advantage of HTTP, communicate over the internet and handle multiple continuous message streams with multiple clients. So uh, what is STD-IO? STD-IO is one more transport mechanism and it is a client sub server communication uh, which on the other hand enables communication through standard input output channels. So you might have a MCP server B, let's say that's running uh, on your local sub process on your computer and the client server communication can happen locally. So you can enable that using STD-IO and uh, this basically uses the standard input and output for communicating to and from the client. So what are we going to do today? We are going to explore MCP communication over the internet through streamable HTTP and we'll break down each step and we'll show this in a sequence diagram. So let me head over to that sequence diagram now. Great, so now let's uh, see the sequence diagram. This is a diagram that shows the two participants, the client and the server in this transport and the interactions between them over this entire life cycle. So as we go down, we see the life cycle events like initialization, client request and so on. And these are the two participants that are interacting and these are the granular interactions that are happening between them, which are shown by arrows over here. So this is basically what is a sequence diagram. The client will initiate communication by sending requests and notifications. The server will respond to client requests, send back data, manage ongoing communication and might also initiate requests for additional data. So uh, streamable HTTP is what allows this continuous communication through 
three mechanisms. So there are HTTP POST requests. So uh, there can be a POST request made by the client to the server. There are also GET requests that can be made uh, to initiate this communication and, and allow the communication to happen. And there are server sent event streams. So the server might send back streams of data. You might see the mention of JSON RPC at different places or JSON uh, messages being sent. So JSON RPC is the protocol for messages. So the messages being sent are JSON RPC messages encoded in UTF-8. And JSON RPC is basically a lightweight text-based format for exchanging data and relies on JSON, which is JavaScript object notation. And then UTF-8 is an encoding standard capable of encoding all possible Unicode characters. So that ensures that messages sent across the network are universally understood regardless of language or uh, symbol complexity etc so that is the protocol for messages that is being used inside of streamable http so we'll look at five different aspects of the streamable http communication lifecycle. so one is initialization which is shown here in the gray box so the client does the initialization then in the green box you can see client making requests to the servers and how is that handled then uh, in the yellow box, you can see client notifications and responses. So how does the client send notifications or responses to the server? Then in the purple box over here, we have the fourth one, which is listening for messages from the server. So the client can actually listen to messages being emitted from the server. And finally, we have session handling. So how is uh, how are different aspects of the session handled in streamable HTTP? So let's start with initialization. The client sends to the server a POST request on the slash MCP endpoint, which is an initialized request to start the MCP session. It specifies the accepted responses, which is application slash JSON for a single simple response in JSON from the server. And the other one that it specifies is text slash event stream, which is basically um, a stream of SSE messages that it can uh, receive. So as per the streamable HTTP protocol, the clients must accept both of these. So the client cannot say that, you know, we don't accept uh, SSE uh, messages as a stream. We only accept simple JSON responses. So that can't happen. The client, if you build a client, you have to build for both of these. Secondly, this initialization request does not specify an, uh, any MCP session ID. So this MCP session ID will be generated by the server. It is an optional ID, but in this um, full sequence diagram, we'll assume that the server does create that MCP session ID because that then enables management of the session, right? And then there's the initialized request that is included as a part of this, as a part of this post request. The server will respond with an initialized response. It provides a unique session ID, which is MCP session ID. And this is what we call an initialized response. This session ID will be used for subsequent communications. And if the server responds with the session ID, the clients need to include this MCP session ID in the header for all further requests. And that is a mandate from the protocol. After this initialized response, the client sends a post request on the MCP endpoint with the initialized notification indicating it is ready for further interactions. It will send the MCP session ID and the notification in the body and the server will respond with a confirmation that uh, it's received the uh, notification with an HTTP 202 accepted response. So that is what happens during initialization. Now we go on to client requests. So what happens over here is that the client, which is represented by this vertical line, sends a post request on the slash MCP endpoint containing the session ID and again with the accept header, which says it accepts both kinds of responses and a body with the request. So whatever the request is, right, whether I want to run this tool or whatever that might be, the server can respond and it has two pathways. There's one uh, option, which is a single response and the server immediately sends a single JSON object response and uh, the response is in the body and that just basically completes the response. The second option is that the server can open an SSE stream. So the server either responds with content type application JSON or with a text slash event stream content type. 
which basically means that it is initiating an SSE stream continuously sending data and interacting with the client in real time where uh, the server sends to the client continuously SSE messages which are real time updates so these are the SSE messages from the server and uh, there is an optional request for input that the server can send and then the client can respond uh, it can send the required input back there's also an optional notification so json rpc notifications that can be sent by the server to notify the client about whatever might be the important aspects that it wants to and uh, once all this is done the server can close the sse stream with a final response over here so this is how the communication happens when the client raises a request Next, we have client notifications or responses. So what happens over here is that the client sends notification or responses via post slash MCP to the server and the server responds in two ways. So either it sends the 202 accepted with no body. So it just accepts the notification or response or it can respond with a 400 bad request, which indicates that, you know, some invalid input with some, uh, error has been provided and it will send back an optional JSON RPC error response as well with this. So uh, the server either accepts this notification response or the server cannot accept it. Next is the client listening to messages from the server. So the client can send a get request uh, to MCP endpoint and request to open an SSE stream explicitly so it will say it accepts text slash event stream with the mcp session id with the get request and what this means is now that the server can respond by saying that sse is supported and it can open an sse stream or the server itself might not support sse so sse can the server has an option to not support sse so it can say sse is not supported so this is a trivial case where it says that 405 method not allowed and that is the response that the client gets back but the non-trivial case is where it actually opens the SSE stream and then something similar happens to what we have seen when clients initialize requests so the server responds by sending SSE messages in a continuous stream or optionally it can also request for inputs and the client responds with a response or it can send some kind of a JSON RPC notification if needed so these are optional and if it accepts the SSE stream, it can send uh, messages over the SSE connection. So finally, we have session handling and how is this done in streamable HTTP? So the first part is resuming after disconnect. So uh, the client can resume a connection after getting disconnected by sending a GET request to the MCP endpoint with the last event ID. And this is an event ID that the server might have provided in one of the last messages that it sent. And then the server can take in this request and then resume from the last event. So it can replay all the messages post that event ID so that the client can get that information. So the server also has an option to end the session if it wants to for whatever reason, right? And in that case, if a client sends a request with a session ID that the server has closed down then the server must respond with a http 404 not found response and the client in turn has to understand that this session is closed or it might be invalid or expired and it has to start a new session with the initialization request that we saw in the beginning so this happens when a request is made from the client with a session id that is either closed or invalid or expired and uh, finally you have the client requesting to end the session the client can send a delete slash mcp request with the session id so the server has two options it, is, it can either allow that session termination and uh, this is the allowed case over here and the server in this case just sends a 204 response with no content saying that the session is successfully terminated the server might instead also say that the clients cannot end session like this and this is something that the server does not allow for example so in that case it can send a 405 method not allowed and session termination is not permitted which is what is communicated to the client
So this according to me are the major interactions that happen between the client and the server in streamable HTTP when it's used as a transport mode for MCP client server communication. And this covers most of the interactions that happen. There are a few that might not have been covered and you can actually look at this particular website modelcontextprotocol.io to do that you can actually go to the menu over here and then you can scroll down to protocol and go to transports and once you click on transports you have all the details about how HDIO works, how streamable HTTP works and there's a lot of textual detail I've tried to convert this into a diagram with most of these things but uh, just as a caveat you know you should also read through this and uh, one of the rules is that whenever you work with some kind of protocol you understand the ins and outs of it this is something that uh, is updated with every version of MCP which might not be possible to 100% in the video. So whenever you see this video, please go to the latest version over here, go to the protocol and understand the transports from here to see if something has changed or if something has been updated or missed so that you are abreast with all the latest updates to this protocol. MCP is pretty new, so you expect updates to happen very, very fast as well. You can see that with streamable HTTP, which is now going to be the recommended um, transport mechanism in place of the earlier SAC one. This is the sequence diagram that they have. It has lesser number of interactions mentioned over here, which just uh, simplifies the sequence diagram, I guess, but it leaves out a few of the interactions that we might have covered in the other sequence diagram. So keep this page handy and go through this to look at the latest updates and for anything that my, I might have missed or maybe represented incorrectly as this protocol is very very new and we expect this to change very very fast. So thanks a lot that's all for this particular lecture and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this streamable HTTP transport protocol and with all this overview we, I think we understand it well enough to now start using it for an actual server and client communication. So let's build that client and server interaction for our next lecture on a model context protocol and see how this works and I will see you then in the next lecture. Thanks a lot for watching.